Well, hello from Kingston. I'm not going to a fancy dress party. I've been invited, representing all the people who are fascinated with and interested in the third crossing, by the city's project lead with Paul Wash to go and visit the site. So let's go see what's happening. The first thing we saw on entering the site was three trailers bearing girders. This provided the perfect opportunity to examine the rear dolly mechanisms closely. Note the hydraulic cylinders that move the rear wheels and the air cylinders that raise the suspension. You can see here that when parked, the suspension is allowed to relax, leaving just an inch or so of ground clearance. The next major feature of note is the framing for what will become the west abutment of the bridge the point at which the roadway actually becomes part of the bridge. To each side of the temporary causeway, large concrete slabs are now awaiting installation atop the girders, creating a base on which a final roadway will lie. We learned that the gaps between the girders already in place will be filmed by a form of diaphragm, allowing some expansion and contraction. We also discovered that, rather than a concrete-on-concrete -concrete rest, the ends of the girders rest on a compound pad of a material that will absorb some vibration, but is still reinforced. At the date of the visit, there are some 32 concrete girders in place, with three more, the ones on the trailers, awaiting installation, which will take the bottom layer of the bridge out to Pier 7. The next three piers, 8, 9 and 10, are complete and ready to receive their girders. Pier 11 is awaiting full curing of its concrete and 12 to 17 are in various stages of completion but all lack the transverse component on which the girders will actually rest. Large amounts of steel rebar are evident. They will provide reinforcement when the time comes to pour concrete. It was interesting, as we walked along the causeway, to look at the pass-through points that allow wildlife to move up and down stream. Each has a game camera monitoring movements. The visit gave us a chance to see just how very large the principal cranes in use on site are. Here's Bridget, and this is the weight stack on her rear deck. And this is Mikey Crane's office. Beyond Pier 17, the first of the major concrete piers that will support the steel structure of the arched section is still curing, but the next sits right in the middle of substantial work on assembling the steel sections that have been arriving regularly from the Walters Group in Hamilton, where they are made. Approaching the lift bridge, which will be raised within the month to accommodate boating traffic in the season, we had a good look at how the steel structure at the east end of the bridge is coming together. As this video goes to press, iron workers have assembled 13 enormous steel sections. This has created a structure resting on a permanent concrete plinth and two temporary platforms. The temporary platforms will bear the load until the whole arch is in place, when they will be removed. Removal will involve lifting the whole structure very slightly and withdrawing these cross beams from the side. The piles on which they sit will be removed too, but later. The work will leave the under-arched bridge over the navigation channel standing free for at least the next century, and maybe longer. I'd like everyone to know how grateful Paul and I were to enjoy this amazing opportunity, to have a look at the site that fascinates us. We'd like to send a very large thank you to Mark Van Buren and Holly Wilson, who made it possible. Well, I found that pretty interesting and informative. I hope you did too. Remember, there'll be a regular update on April 14th, and uh, if you like this, be sure and say so below. And if you want to make sure you get all the updates, hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye now.